Warren, how are you doing? Uh, I, I, got a, I keep getting told by my hosting company that every once in a while one of my plugins is causing problems, and tell, they tell me to fix it, but I don't know how or where to find the right plugin. How do you how do you tell you got a bad plugin? What does that mean, and how do you go about fixing it? That is a, uh, a common issue, uh, especially uh, for those of us that tend to uh, uh, try new plugins all the time and accumulate them, uh, you know, one oh, yeah. plugin on top of another on top of another. It's very possible that you could have a, a plugin that works fine if it's the only plugin on your site, but you add 10 or 20 or 50 or 60 plugins later and it doesn't work with something else on your site, maybe not even your theme. So you got to you gotta do a little research to figure out what's what's happening there. Uh, one of the starting places, and there's several to consider, is uh, going in and taking a look at your WordPress error logs. There's going to be two sets of error logs that you'll want to check. Uh, one's going to be at the root level of your domain. It'll be a little file called error log, and you'll download it. Odds are if that file is really large, that's a good sign that you got a bad plugin. Uh, there's also another error log that saves in the WP-admin folder of your WordPress install, uh, and that's another place mm -hmm. where you can uh, check and see if something is kind of creeping in uh, to the mix. Uh, in addition to that, you can go into your uh, wp-config file, and you have to be careful a little bit there. You don't want to. That's that's a file that if you mess it up, can break your site. So make sure you, you make a backup of it before you go in there. But you can turn debug on, and it will light up any errors or warnings uh, right on your website as you're looking at it live. You'll, you'll be able to see some of the issues on any given page because some plugins don't actually activate on any given page you're looking at. So you might be logged into WordPress behind the admin area looking at something, and, and you might see an error, but you might not normally see that outside the site. Or maybe it's an error that only shows up on category pages, or it's an error that only shows up on your home page and none of the other pages. So you kind of need to look around a little bit with debug on to, to figure it out. Now, uh, recently I came across a plugin. <laughs> that I've been using a little bit. It's actually from a small little company uh, that not too many people have heard of called GoDaddy, um, but it's a it's a plugin called the P3 Profiler, and uh, you can light this pro this uh, plugin up. GoDaddy and several other hosting companies every now and then they'll come along with a plugin where they're trying to review the resources that you're using. They have a vested interest in keeping plugins running smoothly because when a plugin causes problems. It uh, maxes out the resources on their servers. It messes with their CPU, as you well know. Mm -hmm. That's usually when you get the nasty calls. And uh, so they've got a plugin that helps analyze uh, just how much each plugin within your WordPress installation, how much, uh, uh, how many resources, CPU resources that plugin is using. And, and that's actually a pretty useful, uh, useful little tool. Um, there's a, a couple other tools that are coming out even as we speak. Uh, so this is an area where a lot of hosting companies, a lot of uh, uh, folks are investing time and energy to create new tools. So uh, keep your eyes open for them. If you hear anything, you know, uh, if you're watching this video and you know something else, please drop us a comment or something. We'd be glad to share it in a future video or something like that. There's lots of things out, out there like that. But it's always a troubleshooting game. Uh, the last one that I always hate to do this, but, the, the last resort is to turn off all your plugins and then turn them on one at a time and see if you still got an error with each plugin turned on and then do them two at a time and test them back and forth and then three at a time. Of course, if you've got 50 plugins running, there comes a point where the permutations of turning those on and off in different combinations and series uh, can just about drive you nuts, which is why I usually save that one for last. But that's the, that's the last resort. And, uh, see if uh, that can help. Sometimes, too, you can ask your host. Sometimes they can, uh, they might see something that you simply missed. Uh, my host the other day, a Zippy Kid, they spotted uh, a plugin that was causing problems on one of my sites. It had been running for quite a while, but it was essentially adding two uh, carriage returns on a file uh, outside of the closing tags for PHP, and that was uh, causing some issues on, a, on just a few pages of the site, and uh, I wasn't catching it. I was just missing it. And, uh, it uh, definitely caused some issues. I, you know, it was, it was a good catch actually, because as soon as I got it fixed, my traffic picked up. So whatever it was was messing with Google as well. Uh, so there's other reasons to uh, consider this too. It can not only, you know, uh, cause your hosting company to give you uh, a nasty call or shut you down at worst, but it can also uh, hurt your traffic, hurt your volume, hurt your visitors too. You've seen a lot too. Is have there? Have you? Uh, 
have you uh, dealt with or, or used any other tricks or tips to, to try down bad plugins? Uh, you know, it's, I've tried some things like that. It was show loads, and uh, they seem to take the approach of, of coming up with a, an equation to tell you what percentage of load is coming from which script. And I didn't find it very trustworthy that, uh, you know, it's, uh, well, here's, the, here's a question for you. Does the plug-in necessarily ever get called? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So it, it, some, and that's kind of a question. So like plugins, uh, a lot of times they're making the equivalent of like a phone call back to your server whenever they get turned on. The PHP, the little script is running and sometimes they have to communicate back to the server. Uh, sometimes those the phone doesn't get hung up correctly, and it's like leaving an open line off the hook or something like that. And that might repeat every time that page get you know, if, if a page on your site opens up and it triggers the plug-in and it creates this open phone call, and then somebody else opens that page and it triggers the phone call, and maybe both people close the tab or something like that uh, on their browser, it should go away, but the plug-in fails to close the connection. And over time, all these open right. connections uh, persist, and that's what eventually can can start to bring down your CPU. So sometimes you can you can take a look and see if a plugin is out there running and taking up a high percentage, but that's not a real important plugin. There might be uh, something bad with it. You can uh, from there too. Sometimes you can go if it's a plugin that you picked up from the WordPress repository. Head over to WordPress plugins and take a look at some of the error reports that other people have uh, issued on that particular plugin. It may not be something that totally breaks the plugin, but they they may be running into some issues as well. Sometimes it's you know plugins in conjunction with a particular theme that can cause a problem. So you might take a look at, if you're running a specific theme. I tend to run Studio Press themes most of the time. So sometimes I'll go into the forums or the help section at Studio Press and then Google on that particular, or not Google, but search within their forums on that particular plugin's name and see if other people have complained about it too. So you got to do a little bit of investigating. It's not always obvious, um, but it's definitely something that right. that needs to be done. I've always found that just to be a good troubleshooting thing. But anyway, you know, the joke is that the tech support support call usually starts. At, have you tried turning it off and on again, or is the thing plugged in? And and the truth is, there is a there's always a uh, you know a, a, there's a series of events that happen using anything. And so working for, forwards, backwards, chronologically or systematically through it really is what troubleshooting is all about. Uh, whether you do it yourself or you hire a professional. So um, today I, I just call Brett, hire a professional. <laughs> but on some of these things, uh, it really does help out to look at the look at the obvious. I guess I'd add one more thing. If you added a plug-in yesterday and you've been having problems ever since, that might be a good place to start. Yeah, sometimes it's the the last the, the, you know the last thing you turned on. Sometimes uh. Or that might, uh, you know, it's kind of like plumbing too. So sometimes uh, you might add, you know, a new shower head or something to uh, in your house or put some new pipe in or new water heat or something like that. Now that's the strongest element in your whole plumbing system. If the water pressure gets turned up, that probably won't break, but the next little component down the line might bust and you might have a water leak or something like that. Sometimes you add a plug in and, and that's uh, a new stronger component in your total system, but that also increases the pressure somewhere else and causes uh, something to blow. It's kind of uh, another analogy. It'd be kind of like a car. Sometimes a car will run great at one, you know, at 2000 RPMs, but if, if you let it try to idle at 800 RPMs, it sputters out, or if you give it a lot of gas, it bogs down or something like that. Uh, similar things can happen with your website when, you know, you might see plug-in issues, uh, when you have no visitors and, and, and it'll just drive you nuts, but when you've got lots of visitors, it may, you know, you may not see right. the same issues or vice versa. It could go in either direction. So. Right. Yeah, and it, and it may be that, like like you say, the new power head mate is is quite likely not the problem, but it's it's what caused the problem. So you know that the the quick fix and the first thing you identify is, hey, if we take that shower head off, does the problem go away? Well, I, from what I know of plumbing, it probably wouldn't. But uh, but uh, but in in with plugins, you take out that plugin that was that where the problem start may may not be the cause of your problem. But it may be the trigger, and you want to get that fixed. At all. I found that uh, sometimes I turn off a plug-in and just go back to working on something else. Uh, later, I can pl put the plug-in in and fix it, 
I, I fixed the other problem, put the plug in, and it's just fine. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's not pointing the blame. It's a way to look at it. Great. Well, thanks for all your help. Thank you. We'll talk soon.